Good day. Thank you for joining me. I'm Ryan Kun, and I'm going to be taking you through Faz's half year 2019 results. Looking at our recommendation, pharmaceutical firms are traditionally resilient given the inelastic demand of the product, which makes the investments appealing during times of economic uncertainty. Faz is one of the world's largest research based pharmaceutical companies. Given the material investment required to research and launch a new drug, it has a significant competitive advantage due to its size and economies of scale within the industry. Key brands such as Ibrant, Eliquis and Zaljans have shown growth in key categories. Ibrant has been the most impressive, contributing to 15% increase in oncology revenue. Additionally, a moderate portion of the revenue is at risk due to patent expiration post-2025, Fortunately, the group has a strong pipeline with two drugs in phase three development and several product lines receiving FDA approval during 2019. This includes Prevna, which has a competitive advantage due to its manufacturing complexity. We believe Pfizer is a high quality company with a high ROE and an attractive and sustainable operating margin. The company has a strong liquidity position and its dividend has consistently grown over the years. The result of these factors gives us high confidence in the operations of the group. We feel that Pfizer holds value at current price levels. Its diversified lineup of drugs and focus on innovation should control earnings volatility. Currently, the share trades at a discount to its peers, trading at a forward PE of 13.46 times, slightly below its five-year average of 13.64 times. As a result, we recommend an overweight position relative to the Dow Jones Global Titans 50 Index. Pfizer is in the process of spinning off its Upjohn segment. The merger of Upjohn and Marlin, which will create the largest genetics manufacturer in the world, while allowing Pfizer to concentrate on science-based innovative medicine. This deal is expected to enhance global scale and geographic reach of the two entities and create a sustainable and diverse portfolio of drugs, which would lead to an entity that delivers sustainable cash flows with a good return on invested capital. Looking at a few of the financial highlights, revenue remained flat. Key brands such as Ibrons, Eliquis and Zaljan showed 5% growth for the period. This growth was offset by unfavorable currency movements. Gross profit rose by 2.2% and the gross profit margin increased by 168 bips to 81.2%. Adjusted operating profit grew by 4.7% and the operating margin increased by 184 bips to 41.6%. Selling informational and administration costs decreased by 1% in the period, primarily due to a favorable exchange rate and lower promotional and field force expenses. Adjusted earnings per share rose by 8.6% to $0.165 cents a share and dividends per share increased by 6% to $0.72 cents a share. Onto their balance sheet. Net debt increased by 18.7% due to the issuance of senior unsecured notes during the period as well as a decrease in cash and cash equivalents. This left the net debt to EBITDA ratio to 1.32 times, which is slightly lower than the industry average of 1.58 times. Overall, Pfizer has a strong balance sheet with no significant repayment risk. Pfizer expects to receive an additional 12 billion cash injection due to the sale of its upjohn segments, and this will further strengthen this balance sheet. If you would like to place a trade, please speak to your financial advisor or contact the trading desk. A comprehensive company analysis report on Pfizer can be found on the PSG Wealth's online trading platform. Before we end off, I'd like to draw your attention to the following disclaimer. Thank you.